Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. I want us to meditate on this verse today, Job 1 verse 21. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's first start with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done. Now, Lord, we want to take the verse that we just read and allow it to be part of our lives, be part of our hearts, so that we know whatever that happens to us, we will always bless your name. In Jesus we pray, amen. Job, a man who lived during the time of Abraham, was deemed righteous in the sight of God. As Satan was in heaven with the rest of the sons of God, Satan told God that he was traveling all throughout the earth. God brought to Satan's attention Job, and he started to brag. He said Job was blameless. Job was righteous. Satan argued the only reason why that Job was so faithful is because God protected him so much and blessed him so much that Job literally was the richest man of his time. I mean, you're talking about a guy who in Job 1 verse 3 states this. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, five yokes of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the the people of the East. Job was basically the Elon Musk, the Bill Gates, the Jeff Bezos of the ancient world. That's how rich he really was. Satan used this as the excuse why Job remained faithful to God. And think about it. If it was clear and evident to you that God will make you extremely wealthy, everything that you touch seems to turn to gold. You have a beautiful, large family as long as you remain faithful and obedient to him. Many of us would be better Christians now. And this is because God would have supplied us without measure worldly gains. Satan betted on the idea that it is because of all the material success of Job is the reason why Job remained faithful. And like a sports match, God and Satan both placed, uh, placed a bet, placed a wager on Job. When you read Job 1 verses 6 to 11, the arguments that Satan makes is that if God takes away all that Job possessed, Job will curse God. And in response to Satan's bet, God says this in verse 12. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. In a span of what it seems like maybe five minutes, Job lost all of his wealth, all of his cattle, his sheep, his camels, all of his children, and most of his servants. All that he had left was himself and his wife. Yet Job did not crack. He stayed firm. Then Satan attempts to ramp up the wager in Job 2 verses 1 through 5. His argument is that if you affect the health of Job, he will curse God. And in response to this new and higher bet, God says this in verse 6. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hand. Only spare his life. Can you imagine all that God allowed this man to go through? Yet. When we read the end of verse 10 of Job 2, it states that in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Some of us may think that this is the hard thing to imagine, but this type of extreme loss over a short period of time happened recently. If you can remember back in the economic crash of 2008, there were quite a few people, men specifically, who lost their high paying salary jobs practically overnight. Many of them went through despair, ending up killing themselves, killing their families just due to the fact they lost everything. For these individuals, they identified themselves with all the materialistic things that they were able to possess, they were able to achieve. And without the huge house, without the fancy car, Without the luxurious um, lifestyles, they felt like they were less than nothing. And Satan hoped that Job was going to have the same type of feelings of helplessness when he saw that all that he possessed suddenly was stripped away from him. Yet even though Job suffered through possibly what could be the harshest of all trials experienced by any humankind, Job worshipped God. 
Job 1 verse 20 through 22 states this. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. There are three aspects of what Job said in his worship that I really want to take some time to emphasize. First, Job accepted his helplessness and recognized that he was he had no claim to anything. Job stated that naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. It is important to always remember in this life, we showed up on this earth with absolutely nothing. And when we die, we will leave with absolutely nothing. We cannot take anything with us when we cross that threshold between life and death. But I do want to encourage you this. Matthew 6 verse 19 through 21. Jesus tells us to do this. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys or where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Job did not have his heart in anything that he possessed. He simply saw them as blessings from God. But I do believe that Job was laying up in treasure, laying up his treasures in heaven. And when everything went wrong, he knew in the back of his mind that the treasures that he stored up were not lost to him. Now, what are these treasures? Faith, good works, love, kindness, gentleness, peace. Prayer, these aspects of Job's life, Satan could never touch because they were hidden in the safe of God's bank. Second point, Job acknowledges that God is still in total control. There is a sense of peace, a sense of joy, knowing that ultimately God is still in control. Knowing that your life is, is not something of mere chance, a mere coincidence, or that your life is not just moving without aim, without a sense of direction, gives you full confidence of purpose. And the last point is what Job said in verse 21. May the name of the Lord be praised. We need to understand that if God gives us anything, it is for the purpose of that his name is praised on this earth. And whatever God blesses you with is all for the sake of the salvation of not just yours, but for all those who are around you. We need to also understand that if God takes anything away from us, it is also for the purpose that his name is praised on this earth. That thing that he took away serves the purpose that all may see and believe and be granted salvation. Brothers and sisters, the test of Job is an example of us, how we need to stick to God regardless of the situation that we find ourselves in. The trials of Job should encourage you to store your treasures in heaven, for there it will never be lost and never be stolen or be destroyed. And most importantly, we need to have the mind of Job in all things that we do. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Saints of God, keep the faith.